so now uh, i'm going to discuss about the uh, the process of uh, rna splicing and uh, in the previous video uh, i have done about the chemistry behind rna splicing today uh, especially i will discuss about the the spliceosome complex then uh, the other forms of splicing which are involved like cell splicing which are not mediated by the spliceosome machinery let us get started now so now i'm going to discuss about another new term called as transplicing now what is transplicing is actually is about if i say in simple words it is given in this figure that in uh, transplicing two exons initially found in two separate mrna molecules they are spliced together into a single mrna so simple thing in transplicing what happened two different exons from two separate mrna molecules are spliced together to form a single mrna and the chemistry behind this transplicing is same as that of standard splicing reaction as described by me in the previous video and the spliced product is indistinguishable that means you cannot able to uh, find the difference between the splice product it looks like as if the exons are joined in a unique way in a same way in case of cis splicing also so here we can see that have, have been given has rna1 and rna2 so the mrna the exons one from the mrna and the exon two from another rna are spliced together they are spliced together as you can see here they try to join with this this region in the three prime splice site so this is your three prime splice site this is your three prime splice set and this is the five prime the spliced exon from previous rna which to, which is trying to attack with the another um, mrna molecule of the three prime splice site which leads to uh, joining of that two exons from two different mrna and that leads to trans splicing so uh, here it is given in a descriptive way that in our description of splicing above we assume that five prime splice site of one exon is joined to the three prime splice site of the exon that immediately follows it that means normally we know the what we have seen in the splicing process that the five prime splice site of one exon is found to be joined with the three prime splice site of the next exon right but this is not always the case in alternative splicing exons can be skipped right in alternative splicing we as i have said that exons can be skipped between exons can be skipped and can join with another exon and the given exon is joined to one further downstream okay in downstream means further in um, in the three prime end uh, it can uh, combine with another exon to form the splice product now there are some extreme cases where two exons carried on different rna molecules can be spliced together in a process called transplicing so in some cases we see that uh, we have seen that uh, two exons coming from two different mrna molecules they can be spliced together by a process called transplicing as you can see in this picture now in transplicing the two exons initially found in two separate mrna molecules they are spliced together to form a single mrna as you can see here these exon 1 their oh group is carrying out the nucleophilic attack to carry out the transesterification reaction of a, of a three prime splice site of another mrna 
and that leads to removal of the introns and joining of the exons to form a mature mrna product but the main thing that we can see a distinguished feature that we can see that here the lariat uh, ring like structure in the introns is not being formed it looks like a branch like structure as we can see so the only difference is that uh that the lariat in the standard reaction that is in the transplicing is a y shaped branch structure instead so we can see a y shaped like structure in the intron okay as we can see here as we can see here this one this one okay now in transplicing we see a y shaped structure of introns this is because the initial reaction brings together two rna molecule rather to form a loop within a single molecule in the previous reaction we see that what happened uh, that the during the first transesterification reaction the five prime end of the intron the five prime end of the intron fold on to itself and base pair with the branch site adenine to form a lariate ring like structure okay whereas we can see on the other side we can see the oh group the oh group found on the five prime uh, end of the previous exon try to attack or do the nucleophilic attack transesterification reaction with the three prime splice site okay now this can be occur in case of transplicing as well where we can see from two different mrna molecules they are being spliced and joined here we can see the oh group here we can see the oh group it is used carrying out the second reaction with the and it is carrying out the reaction with the next mrna having the three prime splice site having the three prime splice site and joined together to form a functional mrna molecule whereas the introns do, do not form a lariat ring but form a branch y shape like structure which has to be degraded out immediately after your after your this splicing process is over okay now i was saying about the trans esterification and um, it is catalyzed by a complex of proteins known as spliceosome complex so let us uh, study about this spliceosome complex okay wait for a minute okay so rna splicing is carried out by a large complex called as spliceosome okay the transesterification reaction just described are mediated by a huge molecular machine called the spliceosome so spliceosome is the main protein behind all of this process now it is a complex of proteins means there are there are many subunits this complex comprises of about 150 proteins so much different types of proteins are involved in this spliceosome complex that carries out the splicing process and it also contained five small nuclear rna and is similar in size to the ribosome the size of the spliceosome complex is somehow similar with ribosome as you know ribosome has large subunit small subunit and this large and small ribosomal subunit is also composed of many different of proteins and rna in the spliceosome complex also it is made up of what it is made up of 150 different types of protein and five small nuclear ribosomal rnas okay together form spliceosome complex in carrying out even a single splicing reaction the spliceosome hydrolyzes several molecules of atp so many many atp molecules will be used up during the process of splicing because even a single splicing reaction spliceosome complex hydrolyzes several molecules of atp okay 
and it is saying that many of the functions of the spliceosome are carried out by its RNA components rather than the proteins because the RNA will complementary base pair with the mRNA the pre mRNA which has to be spliced out so many of the functions of your spliceosome are done by the RNA components so the, uh, the 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 five the five small nuclear RNA that we that is present within the spliceosome complex that five small nuclear RNA will be involved mainly for the uh, functional function of this spliceosome so RNAs located the sequence element at the intron exon border and likely to participate in catalyzing or catalysis of the splicing reaction itself so the RNA component is been important here in the splicing process they will try to base pair at the 5 prime splice site at the 3 prime splice site they base pair and then they will catalyze with the help of the proteins also there are different type of proteins also involved they will catalyze the splicing reaction so initially we need the RNA for base pairing actually right okay now the five RNA we will not talk uh, we will not actually uh, say about the 150 different types of proteins that are involved we are not going to elaborately function about that 150 different type of proteins but we will say about the five uh, small nuclear uh, RNA that are found within the spliceosome complex because they mainly initially carries out the splicing process and these five small RNA are termed as U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6 together they are called as small nuclear RNA or in short we can write SNRNA so these small nuclear RNA are U1, U2, U4, U5 and U6 as I have said before also they are collectively called as small nuclear RNA so these are actually not the components but the, you can say these are not the subunits but they are the components of the spliceosome machinery more specifically they are the short nuclear RNA which are found within the spliceosome complex and each of these RNA uh, is between 100 to 300 nucleotides long okay and each of these RNA this uh, small nuclear RNA is complexed with various different types of proteins that's why these RNA protein complexes are also called as small nuclear ribonuclear protein also termed as SNRNP okay so the five different types of RNA U1, U2, U4, U5, U6 these are found within the spliceosome complex together these five small nuclear RNA are called as SNRNA uh, length of this RNA is between 100 to 300 nucleotides long and each of these RNA is complexed with several different types of proteins together with RNA and proteins the 150 different types of proteins that I have said together they are called as small nuclear ribonucleoprotein complexes or in short you can write SNRNP okay so spliceosome is a large complex made up of this SNRNP but the exact makeup differs at different stages of the splicing reaction you cannot find all of them together right because each of these um, short nuclear ribonuclear proteins observe at certain time of the reaction okay that's why you cannot see the exact makeup okay you will see different subunits playing different role at different stages of the splicing comp reaction different SNRNP come and go at different times and it's carrying out a particular function in the reaction okay okay for that's all for this page let us move to the next page 
what it is saying it is saying that these SN RNP have three roles in splicing so if you want to see the common role of this short nuclear ribonucleoprotein complex they have three important roles first they recognize the five prime splice site and the branch site so the main function the first important role of these uh, short nuclear ribonucleoproteins are first they have to recognize the five prime splice site and the branch site where the first reaction will be carried out they bring those sites together as required then they catalyze the or they catalyze or they help to catalyze the RNA cleavage and joining reaction okay so this is the main important function okay first they have to recognize the five prime fly splice site and the branch site then they have to bring those sites together as required then they have to carry out the RNA cleavage and joining reaction now to perform all this function we need interactions we need RNA RNA interactions we need RNA protein interactions as well as protein protein interactions within the spliceosome complex subunits so RNA RNA interactions will be involved uh, with the mRNA which has to be spliced out and with the spliceosome components RNA protein interactions will be involved by the mRNA protein mRNA with the protein uh, found on, on the spliceosome complex and protein protein interaction is occurring within the spliceosome machinery and all of these interactions are very very important okay we uh, start by considering some of the RNA RNA interactions here okay let us see some of these interactions if I able to make you understand here so in the figure 13.6 a if you see in the figure 13.6 a which is 13.6 a this is 13.6 a so in this figure what you can see here you see the u1 sn rnp they have a mrna sequence sn rna sequence which base pair with the five prime slice site well very well so you can see that u1 sn rnp uh, can able to bind with this five prime splice site so u1 sn rnp recognizes the five prime splice site by complementary base pairing with with its sn rna with the with the five prime splice site mrna region similarly u6 sn rnp can also able to similarly u6 sn rnp can also able to base pair with the five prime splice site this we will require at the end of the trans uh, at the end of the splicing reaction initially we need u1 but at the la last we need u6 with the help of this sn rnp with the help of this sn rnp they base pair with the five prime splice site mrna and carries out the splicing process so what it is written let us see so it is written here in the figure 13.6 a it shows the interaction through complementary base pairing so there is a complementary base pairing occurring between the u1 sn rna and uh, and the five prime splice site in the pre mrna so initially u1 sn rna will try to base pair with the five prime splice site in the pre mrna later on in the reaction that splice site will be recognized by the u6 sn rna so um, later on in the reaction u6 sn rna will keep come to take place of u1 and will uh, base pair with the five prime splice site okay let us see the figure 13.6 b okay we have to see the 13.6 b well in the 13.6 b you can see the branch site okay you can see the branch site having this adenine residue it have a sequence which base pair with the u2 sn rnp so u2 sn rnp this this is your u2 sn rnp 
short nuclear ribonuclear protein it has this snRNA region <coughs> which base pair with the sequence found in the branch site so initially so the initial step for splicing reaction we require two proteins one is your u1 one is your u2 u1 will base pair with the five prime splice site because u1 have a snRNA region which will base pair with the five prime splice site conserved sequence and u2 which actually um, binds to the branch site okay but as you can see that these two things are required but for binding of u2 we need other splice usome machinery as well you will see when i will sequentially i will say you the reaction steps that u2 snrnp cannot bind initially it it makes to bind here with the help of other proteins you will see them u1 can base pair directly with the five prime splice site so u2 snrnp can able to bind at the branch site with the help of other proteins okay and they have a rna region short nuclear rna region which can be pair with the sequence found within the branch site so as given in this figure the branch site in the figure 13.6b the branch site is recognized by u2 sn rna okay there is also a third example you will see in the figure 13.6c it shows an interaction between the u2 and u6 sn rna let us see the u2 and u6 sn rna are interacting with together so that means here you can see Mm, the protein protein interaction is being done okay where u6 sn rnp and u2 sn rnp are try to base pair with each other with the help of their sn rna okay so when the interaction between u2 and u6 sn rna occur it brings the five prime splice site and branch site together this is the main trick that when u2 and u6 sn rna try to base pair with each other um, what happen it brings that five prime splice site and the branch site together it is this and other similar interactions and rearrangement they led to that drive the splicing reaction and contribute to its precision that means accurately it will cut as we will see later okay so as you can see here that due to the interaction between u2 and u6 previously i have said about the u2 that u2 interacts with the branch site u6 interacts with the five prime splice site later on after u1 has gone out then u2 will come u6 will come and interacts with the branch site which actually uh, brings which actually brings which actually brings the splice site and branch site together actually the five times splice site and branch site will come together with the help of these interactions between u2 and u6 now some other rna free proteins are also involved as i have said 150 different types of proteins are involved in splicing process so some other proteins are also involved in this uh, splice usome in, in the splicing process one example is your u2 af u2 af this is another uh, protein found within the splice usome complex the full form of u2 af is u2 auxiliary factor well auxiliary you all know it is a helper protein actually that will recognizes the polypyrimidine tract found at the three prime splice site and in the initial step of the splicing reaction it helps another protein branch point binding protein called bvp that binds to the branch site so two other proteins we can see here uh, I am trying to simplify yourself your, uh, for confusion. First is U2 auxiliary factor. 
it binds to the polypyrimidine tract that I have shown with, to you. The polypyrimidine tract, the PY tract. And there is another protein called BBP, branch point binding protein. This protein binds to the branch site initially. But later it will be replaced by uh, your U2, U2 SNRNP, right? Let us see, let us see, let us see. So here we can see in the D figure that the, the branch point binding protein initially binds to the branch site where you can see the adenine residue whereas uh, your uh, there is another protein called they have not shown uh, another protein called U2AF U2AF actually bind to the polypyrimidine tract okay now where is polypyrimidine tract for this I have to show you the previous picture well you can see here the polypyrimidine tract right located here so within this polypyrimidine tract your U2AF binds okay and here within the branch site initially branch point binding protein binds in this 5 prime splice site initially U1 uh, protein binds okay and pre pre then it will be replaced by U6 later on okay this 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 protein will also be replaced u1 protein will be replaced by u6 and this protein will be replaced by whom by u2 and due to this u2 u6 interaction it will try to close that branch site with the 5 prime splice site that carries out the first transesterification reaction okay so you will see them when I will say one by one about the whole process okay so we have seen many names like U2AF which is U2 auxiliary factor which binds to the polypyrimidine tract located close to the 3 prime splice site which it is involved in the initial step of the splicing process okay then another protein called branch point binding protein BBP it also branched, uh, binds to the branch site uh, this branch point binding protein will be further removed away by U2 SNRNP U2 short nuclear ribonucleoprotein as we will see in the later on in the figure also other proteins are also involved in the splicing process you will see like RNA annealing factors which helps to load this short nuclear ribonucleoprotein into the mRNA okay there is also a dead box helicase proteins well the function has not been shown okay dead box helicase protein what is the function of dead box helicase protein here it is written that they use their ATPase activity to dissociate the given RNA-RNA interactions allowing alternative pairs to form and thereby driving their rearrangement that occur through the splicing reaction so one by one if I say about this uh, function uh, I have said about the branch point binding protein the branch point binding protein binds to the branch site and this branch point binding protein will be replaced by U2 SNRNP okay next it is saying about the RNA annealing factors RNA annealing factors is another protein which helps to load the short nuclear ribonuclear protein all the short nuclear ribonuclear protein like U1, U2, U4, U4, U5, U6 so all these a short nuclear ribonuclear protein uh, will be loaded to the mRNA with the help of this RNA and link protein okay and another uh, protein like the dead box the dead box helicase protein this is another uh, protein which is involved in the RNA splicing process this protein use their ATPase activity as the name suggests helicase it will unwind so they use their ATPase activity to dissociate the RNA RNA interactions and allowing alternative pairs to form 
and drive the rearrangements that occur through the splicing reaction. So the dead box helicase protein use their ATPase activity to unwind that RNA-RNA interactions that may occur within the spliceosome subunits allowing alternative pairs to form and thereby driving the rearrangements that occur through the splicing reaction. Okay. So, this is the whole process of your uh, whole process of your splicing okay that i have tried to sh say in a haphazardly manner now i will discuss about the splicing pathways one by one so before going through this pathway it's, it's better to show the diagram now because by looking at the diagram only you can able to write by yourself about this whole process so let us get started now so this is the, the simple rearrangement that i have tried to show you to you we can see that u1 sn rnp interact with the five prime splice site good initially it binds then you can see u2 sn rnp interacts with the brand site Although U2 SNRNP previously it does not bind initially. Initially, within the branch site, it is bind by BBP, which is branch point binding protein, which binds to the branch site, and U2AF. These are the initial proteins which bind to the branch site and the polypyrimidine tract. Here it is your polypyrimidine tract. Okay then it will be replaced by this u2 snrnp okay so we have seen the initial figure of splicing process then i have also said that u6 interacts with the five prime splice site later on after removal of the u1 snrnp and u2 and u6 often they will try to interact with themselves and try to by interaction with the u2 and u6 it will bring the five prime splice site and the branch site together to make a rearrangement some other proteins are also involved like i have said the dead box the dead box helicase protein dead box helicase protein actually dissociate this type of rna rna interactions so that um, it allows alternative pairing to form within them alternative pairs to form and thereby driving the rearrangements that occur through the splicing reaction process so let's get started about the splicing pathway well this figure it shows let us see what it is saying it is saying structure of spliceosomal protein rna complex u1a binds hairpin 2 of the snrna so it shows the rna protein interactions okay between the splices of machinery with the small nuclear ribonucleo rna so here we can see what it is happening So initially as I have said also U1 SNRNP bind to the 5 prime splice site then branch point binding protein bind to the branch point site U2 AF bind to the 3 prime splice site. So this is your 5 prime splice site. This is your this is your three prime splice site. This is your branch site. And this part where the U2AF is binding is the polypyrimidine tract. It is your PY tract. Okay, I'm not writing now. Okay, now you will see here that um, after this, the U2 
SNRNP is binding to the branch point site replacing the branch point binding protein and you uh, when you to uh, SNRNP binds it exposes the 2 prime OH group of the adenine found within the branch site which will carry out the first transesterification reaction immediately when you can see that when U2 allows the adenine to expose its 2 prime OH group at the branch site the other transcription and uh, the sorry the other splice use of machinery U4, U6, U5 comes together and tries to make close interaction with the U2 and U1 and due to this close interaction the branch point site and the 5 prime splice site come close together right this leads to the removal of the u1 snrnp and replacing the u1 snrnp with u6 so u6 occupies the position where u1 binds and after binding now it will carries out the first transesterification reaction as you can see this 2 prime OH group will catalyze the first transesterification reaction then U4 goes out and U5 will now mediate the second reaction as you can see here U5 will now carry out the main interaction with U6 to catalyze the second transesterification reaction the free 3 prime OH the free 3 prime OH found at the 5 prime end of the exon will try to attack as a nucleophilic attack it will try to interact with the 3 prime splice site to make the splice splicing process complete okay so this is the whole process and the ladder ring you can see it is getting recycled now this spliceosome complex will be further okay sorry for that this splicing complex will be further will be recycled okay it will be further recycled whereas the ladder ring will be degraded so this is the whole process of the splicing if i say so let's uh, start with these steps so what happened let us see initially the 5 prime splice site is recognized by the u1 snrnp by base pairing between the short nuclear rna with the pre mrna so with the help of rna rna interaction the u1 snrnp binds to the 5 prime splice site then one subunit of u2 af bind to the polypyrimidine tract and another subunit of u2 af bind to the 3 prime splice site so one subunit of u2 af which is also called as u2 auxiliary factor it recognizes the polypyrimidine tract and another subunit of u2 af uh, it recognizes your 3 prime splice site okay now there are two subunits of u2 af so u2 af have two subunits and uh, in the in the picture it has been named in the picture it has been named and uh, the two subunit name as u2 af 65 and u2 af 35 so u2 af 65 65 and u2 a f 35 based on the molecular weight maybe they have been named in this way now u2 a f 65 interact with the branch point binding protein u2 a f 65 interacts with the branch point binding protein so it is saying that the former former means the, the former is the U2AF okay so U2AF interact with the branch point binding protein and helps that branch point binding protein to bind to the branch site 
this arrangement of the protein and RNA is called as early complex so what happens in early complex if someone asks you have to say that initially what happened the within the five prime splice, splice site your u1 SN RNB binds by base pairing between the between its RNA with the pre mRNA found at the five prime splice site then u2 AF bind to the polypyrimidine tract as well as it binds to the three prime splice site u2 AF have two subunits u2 AF 65 and u2 AF 35 u2 af65 actually binds to the polypyrimidine tract and interacts with the base point sorry branch point binding protein that is bbp so interact interacts with the branch point binding protein and that branch point binding protein is allowed to bind to the branch site completely okay so after this so initially your branch site is occupied by branch point binding protein this total arrangement is called as early complex now u2 snrnp will come to take place and removes that branch point binding protein so now what it is saying let us see u2 snrnp then binds to the branch site help by u2 af added means he to help by u2 af and displace that branch point binding protein so u2 sn rnp then binds to the branch site and then it is helped by how u2 af bind with the help of uh, sorry how u2 sn rnp binds u2 sn rnp binds with the help of u2 af okay because it is a helping protein and it removes that branch point binding protein from the branch site this arrangement is called as a complex now it is very important the base pairing between the u2 sn rna and the branch site is such that branch site adenine residue is excluded from the resulting stretch of double helical rna as a single nucleotide bulge as shown in the figure so it is saying that when interaction when base pairing occurs between the u2 sn rna and the branch site that causes the branch site adenine residue to extruded out extruded out means it force out extruded out means to force out the resulting stretch of double stranded helical dna as a single nucleotide bulge occurs this adenine residue is now unpaired and able to react with the five prime splice sites so the adenine residue which was located inside after interaction with the u2 U sn rnp it what happened it occurs this way but that means it it it, it actually flips out it extruded out okay so that its three prime its two prime oh group is free now and ready to interact ready to re react with the uh, interact with the five prime splice site so again i repeating when u2 sn rnp binds to the branch site with the help of u2 af base pairing occurs between the u2 sn rnp with the branch site and uh, during the interaction it extruded that adenine residue found within the branch site the adenine residue will be extruded out uh, as a single nucleotide bulge and this adenine residue its two prime oh group is free and now it is it is unpaired it becomes unpaired now it flips out now and now it is available to react with the five prime splice site okay so when u2 sn rnp interacts it causes the adenine residue to extrude out so that its two prime oh group become free and ready to interact with the five prime splice site okay the next step is the rearrangement of the a complex to bring together all the three splice sites close and it is achieved by u4 and u6 snrnp with u5 to join the complex so u4 
u6 and u5 together they join the complex together these three small nuclear ribonucleoprotein called as tri sn rnp particle so u4 u6 and u5 together form tri sn rnp particle they come together okay within which the u4 u6 are held together by complementary base pairing between their rna components so how these complex are maintain their stability with the help of interaction rna rna interaction occurs between u4 and u6 they interact by themselves with their help of their small nuclear rna so by complementary base pairing they held their rna components together while u5 is more loosely um, associated through protein protein interactions so you can see in the figure that um, this is the u4 actually okay the background is the u6 okay and this one is u5 so you can see that u5 is not tightly associated with the pre mrna molecule which is going to be spliced but u4 u4 and u6 they are interacting with the rna they are interacting with the rna very well by complementary base pairing they are interacting with the rna but u5 is loosely interacting with the rna now at the final step yeah, u5 will catalyze the main reaction actually you will see later on okay so together these three sn rnp are called as tri sn rnp particle okay uh, u4 u6 tightly held together with the pre mrna by complementary base pairing between their rna while u5 sn rnp is more loosely associated through the protein protein interactions now when this u4 u5 u6 comes what happen when it enters then an event thing occurs what occurs let us see what event occurs okay when u4 u6 u5 comes u1 leaves the complex and u6 replaces it at the 5 prime splice site so u1 uh, uh, um, its function is now over so u1 will leave the complex now and in place of u1 u6 from that u tri snrnb complex u6 will come in that place of 5 prime splice site and this required that base pairing between u1 snrna and the pre mrna has to be broken and that is done by the dead box helicase protein by the dead box helicase protein right okay so you for moving out that u1 we have to break that interactions between the mrna of the u1 with the five prime splice site mrna region okay and allowing the u6 snrna to bind with the same region now these steps complete the assembly pathway now the next rearrangement trigger catalysis what happened let us see in the next step so i have said that u1 leaves the complex after entering of the u4 u5 u6 complex and u1 leaves the complex by breaking those interactions okay between the u1 and pre mrna we have to break those interactions allowing u6 rna snrnp to bind now what happened u4 is released from the complex allowing u6 directly interact with the u2 through rna rna base pairing so now u6 u4 will be released from the complex and in that place u6 and u2 will interact this arrangement is called c complex and produce active site okay that is the rearrangement brings together the spliceosome of those components and it is believed to be solely the regions of u2 u6 rna that together forms the active site 
so due to interactions between u2 and u6 it forms an active site which will catalyzes the first transesterification reaction okay so it is saying that formation of this active site facilitated the first transesterification reaction so from here to here you have to write up to here closely form the active site together form the active site okay u2 interact with the u6 to form the active site and then you have to come here you have to come here and you have to write this that formation of this active site facilitates the first transesterification reaction right the second reaction occurs between the 5 prime and 3 prime splice site is mediated by the u5 snrnp which helps to bring those these two exons together okay the final steps involve release of the mrna product and the snrnp this snrnp initially bound to the laddiate ring of the introns but get recycled after rapid degradation of that piece of rna so simple thing um, we can see that after your u4 leaves the complex u6 and u2 okay u6 and u2 interact by themselves okay to form an active site it produces an active site and it is done through rna rna base pairing and uh, formation of this active site juxtaposes or you can say formation of active site facilitates the first transesterification reaction that normally we have seen in the previous uh, lecture and the second reaction occurs between 5 prime and 3 prime splice site which is helped by the u5 snrnp which tries to bring that two exons close together and this is the final step that involves release of the mrna product and the three snrnps so the main time that is consumed is the arrangement of these uh, proteins you can see the splicing reaction occurs in this step after the removal of the u4 to form that u6 u2 interaction to form that active site to carry out your first transesterification reaction here and then the second transesterification reaction is mediated by the u5 which tries to bring these two sites close together to carry out the second transesterification reaction process so the whole steps in the splicing process is the rearrangement of the splicing zone complex as you can see here the whole complex is getting to be rearranged right you can see one by one comes and one by come one goes out to make various combinations when the interaction between u6 and u2 occurs then only your first transesterification reaction comes into play okay and the second reaction is done by u5 so these three proteins are important actually u6 u5 and u2 u5 is carrying out the second reaction of the splicing process it is carrying out the second reaction whereas u6 u2 carries out the first reaction but the rest of the proteins are just mediating are helping so this is all about your splice usome mediated splicing process in the next class i will try to say about the cell splicing that which of the proteins mediate cell splicing okay well for that we have to name them they have categorized the different types of introns group 1 introns group 2 introns you can see here group 2 introns they are very rare in nature some eukaryotic genes from organelles and prokaryotes so from the organelles we find group 2 introns they are self splicing introns group 1 introns they are also very rare nuclear rrna uh, in some eukaryotes organelle genes and few prokaryotic genes okay they have a branch site as g you will see them so these two introns they carry out the cell splicing if you see the 
picture if i don't think the picture has been given yes it is given in the next page yes so this is the group one self splicing see in this this picture you have to see they have a binding pocket containing guanine which will act as a branch site three prime oh group it has to carry out the first transistor if you can see and here no protein is involved you can see here clearly we can see here and uh, it binds actually this binding bracket does not contain g it allows the free guanine nucleotide to come and bind you can also you can also come and bind a can also come and bind c can also come and bind which have this three prime oh to catalyze the first transistor efficacy reaction so this is a fully spliceosome free splicing process here no spliceosome complex is done used in the group 2 cell splicing or group 2 intron splitters here uh, the same process as splicing process is done but no proteins are involved actually whereas the pre mrna spliceosome or the nuclear pre mrna spliceosome um, they they has to be near this whole spliceosome machinery to catalyze the whole process okay <coughs> So here what is written? The figure compares the reaction of the cell splicing group 1 and group 2 introns and spliceosome mediated reaction already described. Chemistry in the case of group 2 introns is essentially the same as case of spliceosome. So what we have studied in the spliceosome mediated splicing same in the case of group 2 introns also carries out but no such uh, spliceosome is needed a highly reactive adenine residue within the intron intron splicing leads to the formation of a lariate ring like product okay so it has a highly reactive adenine residue at the branch site with the help of its 2 prime oh group this highly reactive adenine will carry out the first transesterification reaction with the branch point site to the five prime splice site in the case of uh, in the case of group 1 introns the rna folds in such a way that a guanine binding pocket forms right so in the uh, uh, intron group 1 introns they form a binding pocket for allowing guanine to comes which allows the molecule to bind a free guanine nucleotide so a free guanine nucleotide comes and bind to that guanine binding pocket found within the branch site and used to initiate the splicing although these introns splice themselves out of the rna molecules unaided that means without the help of other proteins in vitro in vivo they do require protein components to stimulate the reaction actually the group 1 introns and the group 2 introns that i have tried to show you a little bit ago just now here we see that within the lab experiments they don't require any proteins to catalyze these functions okay but in vivo it has been observed that some of the proteins are required which are still under research okay but why in vitro they don't require any proteins to carry out the splicing process they can do splicing process on their own like in case of group 1 cell splicing i have said they form a binding pocket uh, which allows a free guanine nucleotide to come and bind with the help of its three prime oh they can catalyze the transesterification reactions well in the group 2 cell splicing same thing occurs as in case of uh, spliceosome mediated splicing they have a branch site they have a 2 prime oh group well very well and uh, the adenine is highly reactive it is saying here okay the adenine is highly reactive its 2 prime oh group involved in the catalyzing of the first transesterification reaction and the second transesterification reaction okay so this was all about your the splicing zone mediated splicing the uh, the group one introns group two introns okay splicing process okay so that's for all um, in the next video i will try to discuss about the 
self splicing also that is this video that is this uh, thing that i will discuss i have already discussed now okay so if you have any doubts regarding this uh, part you can ask me in the whatsapp group